Hello, um, I'm Dean Klein, the Chief Executive Officer at the Yarra Energy Foundation, otherwise known as YEF. Um, before I start this presentation, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners on the land of which I'm speaking to you from, the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people of the Kulin Nation. And I'd like to pay respect to Elders past, present and emerging. I'd also like to say a very big thanks to the organisers of Futex and wish we could be in the room with you all, but unfortunately we're unable to make it in person this year. The Yarra Energy Foundation was established in 2010 by the City of Yarra, which is a local government here in Melbourne, Australia, with a vision and a mission to help the local community reduce their carbon emissions. The scope has since broadened beyond those borders now, and we work on many projects with communities, all with the same vision to reduce emissions quickly and as efficiently as possible. We're a small not-for-profit with a dedicated and highly skilled team of uh, staff and a board of directors, many of whom are represented in this photo you can see. So what are community batteries? Community batteries are popping up all around Australia and they're generating a lot of interest and excitement, but they're not all the same. And there are lots of things that still need to be learned before we can transition from pilots to rolling out community batteries, which are ready to stand on their own. I will explain what we accomplished in our community battery project and some of the main challenges that need to be overcome to make this a sustainable, equitable and cost-effective solution to help encourage more residential solar. This is our community battery here, shown uh, in all its glory in this colour. Um, and this is the first designed and installed in an inner urban area in the state of Victoria here in Australia. So this battery is uh, very close to the centre of Melbourne, to the CBD. It's only about four or five kilometres from the very centre of Melbourne. It was funded by the Victorian government with co-contributions from the distributor, City Power, local government, the City of Yarra, and the Yarra Energy Foundation. On the left, you can see the battery, which was painted by a local Melbourne-based artist, Hayden Dewa, with his mural, Set the Controls to Harness the Sun. The artwork has been a wonderful addition to the battery and really brought it to life. Importantly, it was the local community that came up with the idea to paint the battery and select the artist. The battery itself is a 110 kilowatt, 284 kilowatt hour battery. Three of these cabinets you can see host the battery modules themselves, whilst the fourth contains the inverter and switchboard hardware. After the launch on our of our battery on World Environment Day, which is the 5th of June, with uh, the State Minister for Energy, Environment and Climate Change, the project received a lot of attention from both local, national and international media. Some of the comments you can see there in uh, this slide. I'll give you a brief overview of the project now. As mentioned, this project was made possible by an 800,000 Australian dollar grant from the State Government of Victoria. The total project value with partner co-contributions was around $1.5 million Australian dollars. As with any project, especially trials, this project wouldn't have been possible without a collaborative effort between a diversity of partners. Core partners included the distributor, who's a critical partner in any uh, battery installation, City Power, the local municipal government, which is the city of Yarra in this case, and the Australian National University's battery storage and grid integration program, along with some other part project partners you can see there. Um, uh, we needed a, a retailer who is Acacia and a software partner um, to build the software to run the battery, and that's Mill Software. Uh, the battery in this particular case being used is a Pixie battery, which is uh, a Norwegian battery. While community batteries are still an emerging solution being rolled out in Australia, there are a range of promising benefits. One of the main 
functions of the battery of what the battery does is it time shifts the energy supply and by doing so it helps to capture high renewable grid content during the day and displaces fossil fuel electricity during peak demand in the evening. The chart on the left shows the typical energy mix in Victoria on a sunny day in October showing a significant proportion of energy supplied by rooftop solar as represented by the yellow bar. The right chart shows the typical energy mix on the same day, but in the evening. As you can see, the energy mix is dominated by brown coal. A community battery can help to offset more emissions, more emission intensive energy by time shifting the supply to the evenings. This not only reduces emissions, but at scale, if there are hundreds or thousands of these batteries discharging in the evening, this will help put downward pressure on market prices by providing additional supply during the peak demand. While leading researchers in Australia are still modelling more precise impacts of carbon emission reductions of community batteries, one of the most significant ways to reduce emissions will be through enabling more solar to be installed on the low voltage network. A community battery adds capacity to the network which reduces voltage management issues and increases the amount of solar exports the low voltage grid can handle. Anecdotally, we've heard lots of stories from locals in the local area of uh, North Fitzroy where the original battery has been placed, that since the community battery has been installed, neighbours have decided to install solar. This shows that community batteries have an important role beyond the technical implications, but also positively influencing the community and culture around renewable energy, particularly rooftop solar. Community batteries also have various benefits to the community, such as participation, trust and agency in, clean, in the clean energy transition, avoiding curtailment, enabling more solar installations, increased renewable content in the in the evening supply, access to renewables for those without solar, and that's very important, downward pressure on prices uh, with, through the wholesale market and network tariff, and ancillary services such as EV charging and demand response. On the other side of the equation though, and uh, community batteries also have notable benefits to the network, such as voltage and frequency regulation, uh, known as FCAS here in Australia, managing var variable supply and demand, avoiding network augmentation or costly network augmentation, and again, enabling a lot more solar. At the heart of this project and, uh, and uh, following on from our mission and vision as a not-for-profit, equity was uh, a very important principle for our project from the outset. A lot of community battery pilots here in Australia um, were designed to benefit solar customers only. Our battery charges and discharges directly on the low voltage network and therefore distributes the benefits, primarily lower emissions electricity, to all properties connected to the subnetwork, including renters and those who may not be able to afford their own solar. Now, finally, I'd like to touch on the business and operating model we are piloting and what the future might hold for community batteries. The Yarra Energy Foundation is the owner of this battery as we were the recipient of the grant from the Victorian government. Although we are still considering whether this will be the most suitable arrangement for future projects or in the long term. The battery works on one cycle per day, that is one charge and one discharge per day only. The battery is currently trading on the electricity market, buying electricity when the price is low or negative and selling back to the national electricity market when the prices are high, typically in the evenings, obviously taking uh, advantage of arbitrage. Note that we deliberately chose not to charge overnight when the electricity is primarily produced by fossil fuels here in Victoria.
We, can, we also receive a small amount of income from the distributor, City Power, through new trial tariffs designed to reward the community battery for charging during the day and discharging during the evenings. Under this tariff, uh, the battery can also be penalised for doing the wrong thing. So if the battery were to discharge in the middle of the day and charge uh, during the evening peak, it, it would... Uh, it would incur a penalty. These graphs here show a typical cycle of the battery charging and discharging during a single day. The top graph shows the power capacity. When the yellow line is low, the battery is charging. This is during the day. And when it is high, it is discharging. The green line shows the variable market price of electricity. As you can see, much cheaper during the day, far more expensive in the evening. The bottom graph represents the battery storage capacity. Early in the day, the yellow line is rising, showing that the battery is charging. At its peak, just over 80%, it begins the discharge cycle. The battery software is still being optimised, so this, is only, this only represents a simple schedule which we are currently using. We can expect to see more complex behaviour in the future when FCAS services are active on the battery. This is a really important slide that uh, shows uh, the journey that uh, we've been on to uh, install this battery. Um, and it shows some of the major steps we've taken on our journey for inception to installation. While this is certainly not a linear journey, this diagram has been useful for explaining to others what should at least be considered before committing to a community battery project. And you may be surprised by the amount of steps. One of the major processes that defined the community battery in North Fitzroy was our engagement with the community. And here's the steps we, we took along the way. Uh, so it's engaged with the uh, local network provider, in this case, City Power, local government uh, being council, Define your business model before you start and your ownership model. Uh, conduct feasibility studies um, and uh, work out how and where you may be financing the battery from, whether it be a government grant or a mix of private and gov um, government investments. Develop a software platform. Uh, and then this is the community engagement part here. Select a site and engage with the community at that site. That was a really important step we had to take. Cancel planning. Where is the battery going to go? Does it need planning permission? Um, and it's always best to engage with your local planning authority at the earliest possible stage. Understand what the tariff structures are that you may apply to the battery. A retailer aggregator that uh, is able to trade on the market on, uh, on your behalf. Uh, narrowing down what battery system you're going to use. And uh, obviously, as we know, there's plenty of battery manufacturers out there. All batteries uh, perform slightly differently. and um, it is worth running a very detailed RFQ process in order to uh, ensure that you have uh, the battery is able to do what you need it to do for your local context. Connection designs, how you're going to connect the battery to the grid. Delivery and installation. So um, that's uh, the final step. And then uh, flick the switch and you go live. I'd like to come back to uh, the community engagement part of this project because uh, it was the most lengthy process that we had to go through. Just for context, uh, the battery, um, our battery sits on a piece of city power land. That's the distributor's land. But it is, like I said, it is in the middle of Melbourne and it is. Uh, it does also sit in a uh, heritage protected area so community engagement was vital to this project and as part of that consultation pro 
project, we facilitated a community reference group made up of local residents. The group provided ideas, feedback, and helped the project team to make better decisions. One of the main contributions from the community reference group was their idea to paint the battery, which ended up being one of the highlights of the project and made engaging with the local community far more effective and enjoyable. And to this day, they feel a sense of ownership over that battery. As you can see from this photo here, we had hundreds of people turn out to the battery launch on World Environment Day and Hayden's artwork uh, clearly uh, being a centerpiece of that. Uh, this project was picked up by one of the national newspapers as represented in the photo. Uh, and this photo features Laura Brinson, who is one of the local community champions of our community reference group. And also in this photo is our COO, Tim Shu who led the engagement process. The fact that the battery becomes such a popular talking point across the community was one, was one significant factor to its positive impact. The community battery has opened many new discussions about renewable energy and the di distribution of solar PV across our suburbs, both here in Victoria and Australia more widely. Looking ahead, EF has a vision for hundreds more of these batteries across the distribution network. The key will be finding a replicable model and looking for avenues to attract funding and finance. At this stage, our analysis is that a single community battery restricted to FCAS and energy arbitrage as revenue streams will not be commercially viable. However, there are prospects for how a network of batteries could leverage economies of scale. In addition, there are emerging markets such as inertia, system strength, and co-located EV charging points, which could help to tip the balance of profitability. The role of vehicle to grid electric vehicles will also certainly have a major impact on the balance of energy in the network. However, with the Australian energy market operator predicting a 30 fold increase in storage in 2050, we're going to need storage of all shapes and sizes. Some of that storage may be on wheels. So just to put that in the local context of Australia, the Australian market energy operator has, um, has recently stated that Australia will require uh, around 54 megawatt hours of uh, battery storage. And we currently have about 5.4 megawatt hours so uh, batteries of all shapes and sizes and uh, community batteries will play a significant role in that in the future. Over the coming years here in Australia, there is likely to be more state and federal government funding to support the rollout of community batteries. Uh, the Australian federal government has committed $200 million for the de deployment of 400 more community batteries across the country. So we're only just at the beginning. I'd like to thank the organisers of the Futex Expo for inviting the Yarra Energy Foundation to speak, and I wish you all the best with the rest of your event. Thank you.